the conundrum because if Russia is not going to fold like a house of cards like Libya did or like Iraq did, and they're actually going to put up an economic um, firewall against this unbelievably corrupt U.S. dollar hege hegemony, then the U.S. dollar is at risk of collapsing unbelievably. And the gold and silver, of course, as we've been saying for a number of years, is the currency that Russia and China have been accumulating by thousands and thousands and thousands of tons over the past five to 10 years, waiting for this very moment. So now we're at the final OK Corral showdown, gold versus the dollar. And uh, you saw last week, the dollar was very weak. Then the U.S. started their anti-Russia propaganda campaign to try to get people to buy the dollars again. I think they're just not going to work this time. And gold is going to do very well. Bitcoin, of course, is emerging in the crypto space. Maxcoin, which is my currency, has got a lot of traction right now. It's worth $3 million. It's going to be worth $20 million here in the next few weeks. You combine crypto with crowdfunding, you've got an alternate financial platform that people can finally escape the nightmare that is the command and control system of central banks like Federal Reserve, Bank of England, ECB, Bank of Japan. So we're at the inflection point. We're coming to Texas to do this film with you, Alex Jones. And I encourage everyone listening to help with no, this. No, I, I understand. We're going to do that. Now, listen, Max, let me let me back up here and break down Bitcoin since you bring it up. I know you've been a, a supporter of that in the last three or four years. I get cryptocurrencies. I understand it can bring down the, the, the private central bank money monopoly, the money power. My issue is, from the beginning, I believe they're going to try to infiltrate and destroy and set up whatever the first big currency is, and I've had a bad feeling. I do think it's great that all these other countries are coming up with their own physical and with their own uh, metals backed and their own crypto systems. More diversity, that's the way to go. My issue uh, here with all of this is, is that you take somebody, uh, you know, like some of the guests we had on, uh, last week, like Harry Dent, uh, who is right on so many fronts about the bubble and about generational issues. And then I do see them doing a depressionary system in the economy to try to suck out the pressure from the inflationary QE unlimited that they're starting to taper. But still, that's not going to stop overall inflation. I, I think you're going to see something that economists have said is impossible. Hyper stag inflation is what I've dubbed it. And a lot of people like Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, you know, he's a top economist, he agrees, you know, some with that statement that that is where this could go. I do see gold and silver going up, or at least keeping its value, even as other things retrograde, because there's still so many fake derivatives out there and dollars and other inflated currencies that I don't care how much depression you've got, it, it, it's not going to be able to depress that inflationary curve. So how do those two lines go together? Because people said, well, why do you have Dent on, you know, who, who's bearish on gold? Well, I have people hear other perspectives. I want to hear other perspectives. I don't know what's going to happen. My gut tells me hold on to gold and silver more now than ever. Uh, Max Kaiser, take that complex question and try to flesh it out. Well, okay, so you're adding into, as we pointed out, this geopolitical situation where the U.S. is a, it's a, based on the U.S. dollars, world reserve currency, and people essentially boils down to buy our bonds or we bomb you. That's the U.S. policy, uh, bonds being U.S. dollars. And this has been going on for 50 years, and as a result, the U.S. has printed now has a debt of uh, $17 trillion on the books and another $50 trillion off the books. And it's got so much debt, and they're paying, I think, upwards of 20% of the uh, income that comes in through taxes now from the, to the federal government is used just to pay the interest on America's debt. And so that number is exploding exponentially. So they've got themselves in a corner where if they don't double down again and just invade countries to get them to float their bad paper and their debts, it's the U.S. dollar is toast. In that situation, then people are going to be scrambling for hard currency, gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a hard currency because there's a finite number of Bitcoin in circulation. It's scarce and it's highly desirable. And you make a good point in that in the case of Bitcoin itself, if you have problems with the origin of Bitcoin, there are a hundred different alternative cryptocurrencies and they have slightly different technological profiles. And for example, MaxCoin, which is my coin, has, uh, I think, better technology than Bitcoin in many respects. And a lot of people are flocking to MaxCoin as a result. 
and uh, it does offer though folks who might be able might not be able to let's say move 10 million dollars of gold or a hundred thousand dollars of gold do you want to move it from where you are in cyprus or venezuela or some country or ukraine and you're trying to move that money you can't move a hundred thousand dollars of gold over the border because you're going to get stopped it's just simply impractical but you can convert it to a cryptocurrency put it on a thumb drive or memorize the password, cross over to a new border, go back into the system, can open up that account, get your Bitcoins active. Well, there's also bubble jumping. I mean, e cryptocurrencies could become uh, bubble cycles, which they already are, and then people like crossing a river on stones can hop from them with the passcodes memorized, and then it's, it's almost like a torrent of uh, bubble-based currencies, which could counter the globalist centralized bubble with decentralized bubbles. I want to get your take on a decentralized bubble theory that I just developed on air. And we're going to talk about the decentralized bubble counter to the master bubble. Do you use a weapon against a weapon, a bullet against a bullet? Is the bubble our answer? Straight ahead with Max Kaiser. We'll see if he'll go into a little bit of extra time with us in the next hour to take your phone calls. I'm Alex Jones. Your question's for Max. That means we're not going to take calls on other issues. You can talk about Ukraine, Bitcoin, insider trading 9-11, Russia, uh, Obama's approval rating. But it, it's questions for Max Kaiser, 800-259-9231. Now, uh, Max, uh, finishing up, though, what do you see in the political future of this country? I see the Republican leadership and the Democratic leadership and all the big Republican uh, industry uh, groups and you know, the national associations and uh, pushing to kill the Tea Party. The Ron Paul Tea Party, the Rand Paul Tea Party, which again isn't perfect, but the Republicans couldn't co opt it. So now they're trying to destroy it. So that tells me that's the good guys. Uh, again, I know you're more of a classical liberal. Uh, I see myself as a classical liberal. But obviously, you hoped Obama would be good. You've admitted he's been horrible. You did that quite early, a few months after he was elected. But the point is, I'm not putting all my hope in a Rand Paul or somebody. I just have known the guy since 1996. I personally on the phone privately said, look, you're going to end up winning and you're going to end up being president. And he said that on air. And I'm not trying to brag. It, it, and I don't really even get it. I can still get him on the show if I want to because it's a big controversy with the neocons. So I just don't do it. because It's really not that big of a deal. He will come on when he's president, though. The point is, is that... I don't know what your answer is going to be. I just tried to sugar you up a little bit there, butter you up. What do you think of the Tea Party? Because undoubtedly, the, the, the establishment scared of it. When they leak Biden speeches to high-level Democrats, they're scared of the Tea Party. When they leak high-level Republican speeches, they're scared of the Tea Party. Uh, because it's not that it's perfect. The system's so unpopular, a ham sandwich could beat the Democrats and Republicans. They, they see that as the only area right now they don't control. Uh, do you agree with that analysis? Well, I can tell you one thing. I don't recall in my life uh, ever having the Secretary of State, in this case, John Kerry, being openly laughed at by just everyone in the world. Every country in the world sees John Kerry as a complete joke. Uh, he's the U.S.'s representative uh, in these crises, so-called, uh, that are happening. And what people understand is that the war on terror was a hoax. The uh, bad guys with beards and swords that were coming to uh, kill Americans in their beds. That was just a hoax. People understand that was a hoax. The current confrontation with Russia now, Cold War II, is, uh, came right out of Hollywood, and it'll be hot for a couple of months, and then people will forget about that. And then we'll be on to something else. Maybe they'll go after and try and bomb Iran again or something, or China. But this is just a, another Hollywood uh, episode that lasts a couple of months and the world since i live in london and i've lived outside of the united states for you know almost two decades i'm pretty sensitive to what other people around the world are thinking and talking about and more and more people watch news from different countries because all these different countries have news in english now china iran uh, Qatar, uh, obviously the bbc i mean they all have the same news the same global news it's all in english and people can just see where uh, who's joking who's serious who's not serious and right now, nobody takes John Kerry seriously. No one takes Obama seriously. No one takes U.S. foreign policy seriously. So when you say, well, dig down a little deeper what's happening with the Democrats versus Republicans or the Tea Party, it, it just gets absurdly down to the minutia. Either the U.S. influence around the world is dropping like a stone. The competitiveness in the U.S. is dropping like a stone. The U.S. dollar as world reserve currency was 80% at one point after World War II. Now it's less than 60%. It's heading to 30%. The, everything's moving east. The gold's moving east, the influence is moving east, 
The power's moving east, and the U.S. is being left behind. Did stay you? there, it's stay there. Back in 60, Max. This is GCN, the Genesis Communications Radio Network. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139.